Well, good evening and welcome to this digitally enabled online meeting of the Council of the Municipality of North Perth held on Monday, February 1st, 2021. I'm Mayor Todd Kasenberg and I'll call this meeting to order. I ask the Deputy Clerk to note our starting time for the minutes as 7 p.m. Today's meeting is being streamed live on the Municipality of North Perth YouTube channel and will be available there after the meeting as an archived video. Anyone who is invited to speak will be recorded and their voice, image, and comments will form part of the live stream. The chair and or the clerk have the discretion and authority at any time to direct termination or interruption of live streaming. Such direction will only be given in exceptional circumstances where circumstances may include instances where the content of debate is considered misleading, defamatory, or potentially inappropriate to be published. Thank you. Welcome to those who are joining us via the YouTube channel. Welcome to councillors and staff and any others who've come to this meeting tonight and, and who are, have been asked to participate. At this time, I invite your decorum over the course of the coming meeting. Let's move first to item 2.1 on our agenda, agenda pertaining to pecuniary interest. The benefit of those unfamiliar with our council practices, provincial legislation requires councillors with a potential pecuniary or financial interest in any item at the council table to declare this interest and to remove her or himself from discussions and voting on the item. In accordance with recommended protocol at this time, I invite all councillors with a perceived pecuniary interest, including those who have declared already in writing, to verbally advise the chair in public session and to submit documentation to this effect in writing to the clerk. Councillors are further reminded that should a potential conflict arise during the meeting, they may so declare and act at any point in the meeting. I'll start first with Councillor Anstead. Welcome, Councillor Anstead. Thanks, Mayor Kaysenberg. Through you this evening, I'd like to declare a pecuniary interest on item 5.4.1, the accounts, as my son attends the St. Mary's daycare, and also on item 13.1, the confirmatory bylaw. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Anstead. Uh, next up, Councillor Behrens. Welcome, Councillor Behrens. Thank you, Mayor Kaysenberg. Um, I have submitted documentation to declare a conflict on uh, agenda item 5.4.1 and 13.1, uh, specifically for the daycare accounts, as I have grandchildren attending the North Perth Spinwright Child and Family Center, as well as the St. Mary's Daycare and After School services at these locations. In addition, uh, for the accounts under Public Works Roads, my son is employed at Barron's Metal Fabricating. Thank you. I'm not hearing anything, are you? Deputy Mayor Kellum, are you with us? I am. That's the first time I've heard anything. Sorry about that. Through you, Mayor Kaysenberg. Yes, I would like to declare a pecuniary interest on items 5.4.1 as well, uh, specifically with regards to the Perth Metals accounts as my mother and father-in-law are tenants, and subsequently uh, the confirmatory bylaw 13.1. Thank you. Thanks, Deputy Mayor Kellum. Sorry about that. Continue. All right, um, to explain our virtual processes, I'll be systematically trying to seek consent from various councillors as movers and seconders of the various resolutions uh, we have before us tonight. I'll do this to some degree alphabetically. Should a councillor not wish to respond to the request, they may say so, and I will move to the next name on the alphabetical list. Regarding speaking to our business, councillors tonight will identify themselves through the conferencing technologies chat function. The clerk is assisting me tonight as usual in maintaining the speaking order from that source. Councillors are allowed on their turn to deliver a primary question or comment and may make one supplemental without intervention from me. 
we will follow speaking order carefully and any councillor wishing to have a second say will have to indicate again and go to the bottom of the speaker's list. This is a normal process consistent with Robert's rules of order. Councillors are reminded that if I believe you are not audible, I will call on you, let you know. And of course, if you don't hear me, you should call out at some point too. Um, you do not need to ask if you can be heard. I'll be the arbiter of that. Councillors are further asked to maintain a mute state in the web conference until I have called upon you for a verbal reaction. Should any of your votes not show up in eScribe, our online voting technology, I'll call on you when things seem stalled to register a manual vote. At that time, take yourself off mute, answer yes or no on the motion and return to mute. Regarding item 2.2 of our agenda tonight, I have a motion before me for the adoption of the agenda for tonight's meeting that reads as follows, that the agenda for tonight's meeting be approved. Let's start with Deputy Mayor Kellum. Will you serve as our mover for that? Yes, I'll make that motion. Thank you. And Councillor Johnston, will you be our seconder? Yes, I would second that. Thank you. Any discussion or debate on this one? Let's have that vote. And we're missed. I'm in favor. My vote didn't come up. I'll read the, uh, get into uh, Eve Crow. Thanks, uh, Councillor Johnson. So with Councillor Johnson's vote, that motion is carried. Uh, we're now at, a, at item number three on our agenda, the so-called consent agenda. These items are placed on our agenda because they are believed to be non-contentious, yet they require Council's recognition and or action. Grouping them expedites our business. However, any councillor wishing to extract an item from the consent agenda for discussion, debate, and individual action may do so. There are six items on our consent agenda this evening, including the minutes of our last regular council meeting. Councillors, do any of you have a desire to extract any of these items for discussion or action? Councillor Roth Rothwell, I believe, wants the floor. Yes, Councillor Rothwell. Thanks, Mayor Todd. Uh, I'd like to extract uh, item 3.6, Township of Augusta, regarding the closure of the Ontario Fire College, and perhaps we could hear from the fire chief at an appropriate time. Thank you. Uh, next is Councillor Richardson. Uh, thank you, Mayor Todd. I was going to make mention of uh, pulling 3.6 for future discussion as well, so I will... Um, allow that to happen as uh, Councillor Rothwell has already pulled it. So thank you. So why don't we uh, deal with the, uh, we'll consider the other five items, including the approval of the minutes from the last meeting. Uh, anyone else have anything else they'd like to extract before we go to a, a slightly changed motion for the purposes of allowing a fulsome discussion on 3.6? So seeing none, um, I'm going to change this motion to read the, the council items or consent items for 3.1 to 3.5 uh, be received for information and the minutes of the January 18th, 2021 regular council meeting and January 25th, 2021 special council meeting be adopted. Can I call on Councillor Richardson to be our mover for that one? I will move that. Thank you. Thanks. And Councillor Rothwell, will you be our seconder? I'll second the motion. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, Council, any discussion or debate on this one, which is modified from what is in our agenda package? We're going to consider item 3.6 separately. Anything? Okay, let's have that vote. I'm... Who are we missing? Councillor Richardson is there. Who are we missing? Councillor Siler? Yes. Okay, so Councillor Siler was the one I think we didn't have tracked. And with his vote, that is carried. Thank you. Uh, let's turn our attention then to item 3.6. It's been extracted from our consent agenda um, because we had a, 
a launch, uh, a request from um, Councillor Rothwell. Why don't we give him the floor at this point to speak to, uh, to this item. Uh, Councillor Rothwell, welcome. Thanks, Mayor Todd and Council. I appreciate uh, this uh, matter has been in the news uh, regarding the province's decision to close the Ontario Fire College. And there has been a fair bit of uh, 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 comment in the media regarding this uh, matter. And uh, I did put a, a quick note uh, through to our fire chief and I wondered if uh, Council would be uh, willing to hear from our fire chief any comments he has regarding uh, the uh, uh, proposal to close the uh, fire college and as to whether or not we should in fact be supporting the uh, township of Augusta's uh, uh, resolution uh, to uh, request the uh, province to reconsider that matter. Thank you. Thanks. So just for procedural properness or propriety, um, council, does anyone object to uh, me inviting Chief Smith to speak to this matter? Seeing none, uh, Chief Smith, we'll have you, uh, we invite you to speak to this matter. You can also sing What a Wonderful World, if you like. <laughs> you Welcome. can hear me, you can hear me, Your Worship? Yes, we can. Okay, thanks. Through you, Mayor Todd. Um, yes, in regards to uh, the resolution that uh, Augusta did send out, I would uh, recommend to Council to support it. Um, based upon the uh, information that we've received in regards to it, there was no consultation with the Ontario Association of Fire Chiefs in regards to closing the college. It was just announced to us through a WebEx and uh, basically that's where everybody learned about it. Now we have done our research in excuse me, and what it cost us normally to send somebody to the fire college and what it would cost us to send somebody to one of the uh, training centers that they were referring to. Currently, when we send somebody to the fire college for a course, it roughly costs us around $1,000 to send that person to the college. And if we had to start sending people to the training centers, uh, we did some calculations and we're looking at roughly $2,200 to send somebody to a training center. So we see a substantial increase in that. Uh, in regards to what it did cost us at the college was when we sent somebody for a course there, it was $65 for the registration and that included their week of accommodation and meals there. So all we were paying was our uh, daily rate for training and the mileage to get to the college. Um, it, it, it's truly a, a, a tough and difficult thing for the fire service. I, I know there's a lot of different, uh, how did I put this the best way? A lot of different theories in it. Um, with other fire chiefs, but in general, I think the biggest percentage of fire chiefs, especially part-time and volunteer, that the co closing of the college is gonna be a very, very difficult thing for us and also a costly adventure to uh, go ahead with training. Thanks, Chief. Uh, Councilor Rothwell, did you wanna wrap up any comments about this matter? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mayor Todd, and thanks, uh, uh, Chief Smith. I, I appreciate your comments, and I think on that basis, I'd be prepared to uh, move as appropriate uh, that uh, North Municipality North Brook Council uh, support the resolution of Township of Augusta regarding uh, reconsider uh, request for uh, the province to uh, reconsider their uh, decision to uh, close the Ontario Fire College. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Rothwell. Nicely, uh, nicely phrased. The staff, uh, I think, appreciated the clarity of that. Um, we are sending this to who? Just to make sure we got the people who should receive it. The clerk is looking this up. Sorry, just bear with us. The premier. Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. Local MPP and other municipalities. Very good, thank you. 
Is that okay with you, uh, Councillor Rothwell? Yes, I believe uh, it's the last paragraph uh, on the uh, the resolution of council. So if that's what I think I heard uh, our uh, clerk or else mention, I certainly support that. Yes, thank you. Great, thanks. Okay, um, uh, Councillor Richardson, will you serve as our seconder since you uh, weighed in on this one already? Absolutely, I'd be happy to do so. Thank you. You guys get back to back motions here. All right, um, any discussion from council? Any further comments? Okay, seeing none, um, hopefully we have uh, caught up in East Drive with this one. Uh, it looks like we could have a vote on this one. Well, uh, to the uh, effort of the deputy clerk, thank you. We're missing other vote oh, and that is carried. Thank you very much. Uh, that will allow us to move on to item four. Tonight we have no um, propositions of public meetings or delegations, uh, which allows us to move forward in our agenda to item five, reports from departments and key staff. Item 5.1.1 brings forward to council a report on the status of the contract of the climate change coordinator, a North Perth employee who is working for all of the municipalities in Perth County and a recommendation associated with this report that we not end this work with the expiration of its external partial funding, but continue our investment. I'm gonna call on North Perth CAO Chris Snell to give us uh, his perspective and understanding of this matter, bring council up to speed. Mr. Snell, welcome. Thank you, Mayor Todd. Good evening, council. As council is aware, um, the climate change coordinator has, a, has been a two year contract uh, mostly paid through a grant received from the Federation of Canadian Municipalities. Um, they paid 80% of the position with the um, seven municipalities picking up the remaining 20% um, cost share for the last two years. The partners have met um, recently and would like to see us continuing um, this effort. When we put our FCM grant forward, FCM staff told us that our work plan was um, fairly aggressive and that we probably would just get to the um, um, greenhouse gas um, um, report stage, which is almost a, we're exactly where we're gonna be. Uh, I would just like to concentrate on some of the accomplishments um, that um, the climate change coordinator has completed in the last two years. Um, it's been a great help for this position to help us with our um, conservation demand management plans that the province requires to do. Um, the greenhouse gas inventory has been completed. Um, she's met with several community stakeholders um, looking for support on both um, the plan itself and partnerships towards implementation. Um, completed the community engagement survey, which I know many of council took part in. And I believe there was almost 900 people took part in the survey across, across um, um, geographic Perth County. And we're very nearing completion of the plan. And um, actually we hope to have it to council um, probably in draft format very few near, soon, but then um, Rebecca will be doing a presentation to council um, likely the very first meeting in February. Really the, what we're looking forward to the, for the next year or, or two years if the contract's extended that is just to um, implementing um, the plan once it's approved by council along with fulfilling some of those other goals, such as um, the conservation energy demand um, legislation required by the province. Also some of the other projects that um, the coordinator has been working with across the region is looking at um, uh, um, electric charging stations across the region. So that she's met with many other coordinators from um, Southwestern Ontario to look at implementing uh, a, a more um, a more um, useful um, charging um, station network across southwestern Ontario. S so the recommendation is that all seven partners will be taking this to their council and we hope that all seven partners come in and that the cost will be split equally amongst the seven of us. I can certainly answer any questions council may have. Thank you, CAO Snell. Uh, council, questions or first comments?
for parents. Are we seeing anything? Okay. So I have a resolution then for consideration that reads as follows, that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth direct the municipality to enter into a new local partnership agreement with the Municipality of West Perth, Township of Perth East, Township of Perth South, County of Perth, Town of St. Mary's, and City of Stratford for the shared services of the Climate Change Coordinator for the period of March 1st, 2021 to December 31st, 2021, with the potential for extension in 2022. Can I call on Councillor Seiler to be our mover for this? I will move that, thank you. Thanks, Councillor Andreessen, will you be our seconder? Yes, I'll second that motion, thank you. Thanks, any discussion or debate, Council? Okay, we're not seeing any, so let's have that vote. And that is unanimously carried. Thank you, Council. That was one of the most interesting survey experiences I've had in a while. I have to admit, uh, technology impressed me. Um, okay, onwards then to, uh, thank you, CAO Snell. Onwards to item 5.2, uh, reports from the clerk's department. And uh, at this time, we have item 5.2.1 in which council is provided with a report from County of Perth planner, David Dundrum, that recommends that this council send a letter to the County of Perth Land Division Committee in support of an application from Dell and Bonnie Cressman and has to farms limited for consent to sever property owned in Elma Township. I'll ask Mr. Gundrum to provide us with an overview of this request. Welcome, David. Uh, thank you, Mayor Kaysenberg. Uh, Mayor Kaysenberg, uh, members of North Perth Council, good evening. Um, as mentioned, this um, application for consent uh, concerns property uh, in the Elmo Ward, uh, affecting Lot 10 and the east part of Lot 9, Concession 3, uh, municipal address of 6308Y81 that has been submitted by uh, MHBC Planning on behalf of Dell and Bonnie Crestman, uh, Hasta Farms. Um, so just to summarize the application and the background to it for Council, on December 17th, 2020, uh, County of Perth Council adopted official plan amendment number 195 uh, to allow for severance of an existing single detached dwelling on the subject property, uh, proposed to form part of the same parcel of land that would contain an existing farm related commercial industrial use, uh, notwithstanding existing restrictions in the county OP that restrict severance of farm related commercial industrial uses to include only dwellings of a temporary nature. Um, the subject property currently contains a farm-related commercial industrial use being a grain elevator business, uh, as well as uh, accessory uses and structures there too. And in addition to that, a uh, permanent single detached dwelling. A copy of uh, OPA 195 uh, amendment text and the corresponding map schedule uh, that I referred to previously have been included as attachments to the report for reference by council this evening. Uh, the provincial policy statement, as it applies here, makes clear distinction concerning the context through which an existing dwelling uh, within a prime agricultural area may be severed. Uh, the proposed severance in this case would not result in creation of a new non-farm residential lot in a prime agricultural area, uh, but rather the creation of a farm-related commercial industrial lot that would contain an accessory residence in the form of an existing permanent single detached dwelling. Uh, to, to affirm the approach of the severance, uh, the controls that are contained within the text of OPA 195, uh, as it relates, make clear reference to the accessory nature of the dwelling with respect to the existing farm related commercial industrial use. Uh, and the amendment uh, prohibits severance of the, of the accessory residence as a standalone use in the future. Applicable policies that are listed under section Five, more specifically section 5510 of the county official plan uh, state that the amount of land for the farm related commercial industrial use shall uh, include only the minimum necessary to support the use and its servicing needs. Uh, while the original consent application that was received by the county planning office on December 15th of 2020 uh, in proposed to several lot that would have an area of approximately 6.4 hectares 
or 15.8 acres. Uh, county and with county staff responding uh, through our original review of the application, uh, advising that a reduction in the area of the severed lot uh, be, be executed through uh, recommended condition seven and supporting condition eight that are contained in our report to council tonight. Uh, further discussions that we've had with the applicant's agent uh, since the publication of tonight's agenda and subsequent review of a, of a, of a revised uh, severance sketch and a new site concept drawing, uh, both dated from January 28th of 2021, uh, that have both been provided separately to council following publication of the agenda, uh, have prompted county planning staff to reconsider our original recommendation and propose a new set of seven recommended conditions of approval that were provided uh, through to council via the municipal clerk uh, earlier today. Uh, county staff have reviewed the updated seven sketch uh, as well as the new site concept sketch and have found that the revised proposal does meet the applicable policies that are listed under section five, specifically section 5510 of the County of Perth official plan. And more specifically, uh, that they satisfy the requirement that the amount of land to be severed for the farm related commercial industrial use shall include only the minimum, minimum amount of land necessary to support that use and its servicing needs. In summary, we are recommending that North Perth Council uh, receive our report uh, concerning application for consent B6320 uh, submitted by MHBC Planning Limited on behalf of Dell and Bonnie Pressman and Costa Farms, and that uh, North Perth Council recommend to the County Perth Land Division Committee uh, that this application be approved uh, subject to uh, the seven revised conditions that were provided uh, through the council earlier today. Uh, I'd be happy to, that is a summary of our reporting on this application. I'd be happy to answer any questions that uh, mayor and council may have regarding the application. And I do understand uh, that the owner's agent from NHBC planning is also on hand tonight to help answer any questions that the council may have. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Gundrum. Uh, council, any questions or first comments on this matter? Councillor Behrens, well, welcome. Uh, thank you, Mayor Kaysenberg. Through you uh, to Planner Gundrum, how much land is going to be in the revised that's going to be severed? Uh, through to Councillor Barons, um, originally it was 6.4 hectares or 15.8 acres that were proposed to be severed. With the reductions in place, um, it would bring that down to 5.2 hectares or 12.8 acres. So it would be a reduction of approximately uh, three, just shy of three acres from what was originally proposed. Any other questions or first comments? We're not seeing any. So I have a um, resolution, as you've heard, uh, that was substituted today uh, based on uh, agreement between, I guess, the county and, uh, and the petitioners, uh, which I will read into our record. It's a, it's a lengthy one, but um, you're used to me reading the phone book, so uh, here we go. That the Council of the Municipality of North Perth received the report entitled Application for Consent to Sever Number B6320 by MHBC Planning Limited on behalf of Dell and Bonnie Cressman Hasta Farms, affecting lands described as Lot 10 and East Park of Lot 9, Concession 3, Elma Ward Municipality of North Perth, 6308 Line 81, dated February 1st, 2021, prepared by the County Planner for information. And the council recommends that the County of Perth Land Division Committee approve the application for consent to sever number B63-20 for lands described as lot 10 and east part of lot 9, concession 3, Elma Ward, Municipality of North Perth, 6308, line 81, subject to the following conditions. One, that confirmation be received from a solicitor that the certificate of the official will be scanned and attached to the electronic registration of the transfer. Two, that the Land Division Committee be provided with a description that is consistent with the application and equal to that required for registration of a deed, transfer, or other conveyance of interest in land under the provision of the Registry Act or Land Titles Act. Two copies of registered reference of 
plan required an electronic file containing the digital plotting of the description under the provision of the Registry or Land Titles Act, uh, including the textual description of file format maps, stand use, scale, and location information, such as lot concession and municipality in a geo-referenced AutoCAD.DWG format. Alternatively, the committee be provided with an order pursuant to Section 150 of the Land Titles Act, RSO 1990, or Section 80 of the Land Registry Act, RSO 1990, issued by a land registrar exempting the transfer from the requirement that a reference plan be deposited. If it has been determined that the subject property is a whole lot on an original township plan of survey, an exemption order cannot be provided by a land registrar. Satisfactory proof of same shall be provided by a solicitor with confirmation stating the reason why an exemption order cannot be provided. Three, that confirmation be received from the municipality of North Perth that all financial requirements have been met, if any. Four, that confirmation be received from the municipality of North Perth that all taxes have been paid in full. Five, that confirmation be received from the municipality of North Perth that the apportionment schedule for municipal drains in this area be reviewed and updated if necessary to the satisfaction of the municipality of North Perth in accordance with section 65.1 of the Drainage Act RSO to show that the applicant will be responsible for all costs associated with this reapportionment. Six, the confirmation be received from the municipality of North Perth that the amendment to the municipality of North Perth's implementing zoning bylaw has been adopted to place the severed lot into an appropriate zone to recognize a farm related commercial industrial use, accessory uses thereto, including an existing single detached dwelling and to regulate their locations. And seven, that the severed lot be reduced in size from approximately 6.4 hectares or 15.81 acres as indicated on the original application sketch dated September 11th, 2020 to be approximately 5.2 hectares or 12.85 acres in size as indicated on the revised application sketch dated January 28th, 2021 for a total reduction in area of approximately 1.2 hectares or 2.96 acres. The areas to be excluded from the severed lot from that originally applied for constitute existing field areas under cultivation found northeast of an existing municipal drain, including the municipal drain itself, approximately 0.65 hectares or 1.61 acres, and an existing field area under cultivation found southwest of the existing building cluster, approximately 0.55 hectares or 1.35 acres. Councillor Chelston, don't you dare ask me to read it again. Now, uh, can I call on Councillor Anstead to be our mover? Yes, I would move that. Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Behrens, will you serve as our seconder? Yes, I will second that. Thank you. Thanks. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. I vote didn't pop up again. I'm in favor. Thank you. So with Councillor Johnson's vote, that is carried. I actually felt like I read that at a pace that you'd be proud of, Dave. I, I was only going to ask you to repeat the middle part, the middle sure. nine minutes. <laughs> Thanks for that. So that is carried. Thank you. Uh, let's move on then to item 5.2.2. Council is asked to authorize the clerk to sign agreements for the reapportionments of five municipal drains. Uh, who's to speak to this one, Pat? Pat is going to speak to this. Let me just set up the AV so we don't create a black hole in North Perth. That would be bad. Hold on. As stated in the report prepared by Danette and previously mentioned in the application for consent by Hasta Farms, Drainage re or reapportionments are often a condition of a land severance. And before you tonight, there are five municipal drains that can be, recon can be considered for reapportionment. Council, any uh, questions, first comments on this matter? We're not seeing any, so let's have the resolution on the floor here that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth authorizes the clerk to sign the agreements for drainage reapportionments affecting the following municipal drains. One, the Atkin Municipal Drain in Elma. Two, the Atkin Branch A Municipal Drain in Elma. Three, 
the J. Heimer's Municipal Drain in Elma, four, the McCourt Municipal Drain in Elma, and five, the Baker Municipal Drain in Elma. Can I call on Councillor Duncan from Elma to be our mover? I will certainly move that. Thank you. And Deputy Mayor Kellum, will you serve as our seconder? Yes, I will second that motion. Thank you. Any discussion or debate from Council on this one? We're not seeing any, so let's have that vote. Something freeze, by chance? We're missing Councillor Andreessen, maybe. Councillor Andreessen, what say you? I'm in favor. Thank you. So that is carried with Councillor Andreessen's uh, vote. Okay, let's move forward. Uh, we have no report indicated tonight from our manager. Programs is item 5.3. That means next item 5.4 reports from the Treasury and the finance department. As item 5.4.1 staff has brought forward for council review as of this day, February 1st, 20. I'll note as, as always that uh, some councillors have declared a potential pecuniary interest in this item and presented themselves from consideration. Uh, from the rest, are there any questions or comments about? Uh, this matter. Seeing none, I have a resolution that reads as follows. Summary of accounts be received by council for information. A whole bunch of numbers and the one at the bottom says $831,885.62. And I call on Councillor Johnston for this one. Yes, I'll move that. Thank you. And Councillor Richardson, will you serve as our second? I will second that. Thank you. Thank you. Any discussion or debate, Council? We're not seeing any, so let's have that vote. And that is carried. Thank you. We have no report from our environmental services department uh, this evening as item 5.5, which allows us to turn to item 5.6, reports from our operations department. For item 5.6.1, council is asked to authorize the revision of fees for our cemetery services. I'm gonna ask Mr. Couch, our manager of operations to address this matter. Uh, Lyndon, welcome. Thank you, Mayor Kaysenberg, members of council. On behalf of the board, uh, we met virtually uh, for the first time in 2021, uh, a couple of weeks back and discussed rate increases. It is a trend that we've been talking about over the past two years with the board. And the board has provided some information for council to consider on rates um, coming off a 10% increase last year. Uh, and the effort here is to become more sustainable as an operation with user fees uh, that help to offset costs of the operation. Um, it is recommended to go to a 7.5% increase in fees. Uh, we did take some averages with like-sized municipalities and towns um, and found that with this increase now, we would be at average um, for our, our general operational fees, uh, including um, internment and opening and closing fees. And then for the uh, columbarium rates, et cetera, we would be right on average of the like-sized municipalities that we we used as comparators. So it does place us in the middle of that group. The board understood that and provided for uh, council uh, the recommended rate increase for Schedule N for this year. Thanks, Mr. Couch. Uh, council, any questions or first comments on this matter? We're not seeing any, so I have uh, two things, a resolution and a bylaw, uh, and the bylaw amendment. And uh, let's go with the resolution first. That the Council of the Municipality of North Perth proceed to approve the proposed amendments to the cemetery fees effective February 2nd, 2021. Councillor Seiler, can I call on you to be our mover on this one? I'll gladly move that, thank you. Thank you. And uh, Councillor Andreessen, will you serve as our seconder? Yes, I'll second that motion. 
Thank you. Any discussion or debate? We're not seeing any, so let's have that vote. My uh, vote did not pop up. I'm in favor. Thanks. So with Councillor Anstead's vote, that's carried. And next up, we have the uh, bylaw, uh, the amending bylaw here, bylaw number 11-2021, being a bylaw to amend Schedule N of the North Perth Rates and Fees bylaw, be introduced, read, and considered read a first, second, and third time, and be finally passed. And said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Councillor Anstead, can I call on you to move on that one? Yes, I would move that. Thank you. Thanks. And Councillor Barron, will you be our seconder for that one? Yes, I will second that motion. Thank you. Thanks. Any discussion or debate, Council? We're not seeing any there, so let's have that vote. And that is carried. Thank you very much. Um, we have no report from the fire chief, which brings us to agenda 5.8. It's a new item on our agenda for beginning this evening and perhaps for the next few uh, meetings as we review departmental business plans. We begin tonight with a review of the business plan for the administration department, which includes a very diligent staff addressing organizational leadership, including policy and strategy community and economic development, communications, and interestingly, crossing guards. I'm gonna call on CAO Snell first to present us our mandate for the review and then entertain a discussion and debate on this. Council, what I'm gonna propose is that uh, when we, after CAO Snell's uh, presentation, uh, we suspend the rules uh, per our procedure bylaw so that we can have a discussion that is focused on uh, both the operations and on the capital sides of projects uh, that have been described in the plans. And we'll use the methodology that I, uh, that you've come to know me for, which is we'll focus on questions first to collect facts and information, and then we'll uh, proceed to have a look at ideas and make some decisions. So if, um, if you'll indulge me for a moment, we'll let CAO Snell, um, uh, proceed with his presentation of general overview and information uh, per this report, and then we'll consider that motion to uh, suspend the rules uh, to proceed in the manner that I've described, and we can have a fulsome discussion. Uh, CAO Snell. Thank you again, Mayor Todd. Um, as Council is aware, um, in the development of the business plans, um, and it was across all departments, we really had more um, project and more work than what we had available staff hours. So tonight we're gonna begin by, by looking at more closely the administration department and the resulting um, um, overcapacity in this department equals um, 1,758 hours, which is equivalent to approximately one FTE. I'm just gonna briefly um, take counsel through um, the business plan itself, highlighting uh, uh, highlighting a couple of er or areas, and then I'll um, certainly be available to answer any questions. So, starting on page two, um, the the administrative assistant position um, is currently still vacant, as um, we had a retiree um, last year, and that position was not filled at the time just because of of COVID issues. But we also wanted to look at um, um, re-designating um, those hours across across um, the department. The other position that council may not be um, more or less aware of is the policy assistant point five. We share um, the administrative assistant position with the fire department. So that position um, works for us um, about half the time, it, it doesn't always work out well, depending on how busy um, they are. Um, but um, usually that position looks after um, and helps um, with HR a lot on some of the um, more routine HR um, tasks um, as, uh, and as well as um, policy writing um, for health and safety um, and some of the other um, policies and certainly has been 
um, very helpful during um, some of the policy implementation um, during COVID. So the next several pages are really, um, really the, the strategic priorities that are um, um, laid out through the strategic plan for the administrative, administrative department, as well as um, what operational services the department um, um, leads. I will not go through all the strategic um, um, priorities, but I will skip to right to page twelve. Starting on page 12, we start to break down um, the hours, um, both by operational um, activities, as well as um, the project um, requirements of um, that's been um, listed through the strategic plan, as well as another, any other departmental priorities that, that either council may have brought forward um, throughout the year or um, other items that may have um, landed on our plate. So really, um, in my position, which is the, the CAO division, it really was hard to n break it down um, as, a, as a really detailed um, per hour um, thing, just because some of the items bleed into each other, but I really did take a, a, a quick stab at um, how sort of my week looks, and then hence how my year looks, and if probably if anything, um, I know I'm probably even um, not spending enough time on um, things like long-term strategic planning, um, and in some ways I'm probably even fairly conservative in my estimate of um, 1997 hours. Moving on to the projects. Um, These are really just taken strictly right from the strategic plan. Um, one of the things I have highlighted in yellow is something that can be deferred is lobbying the province reconnectivity. And although I not I know this is highly important, I just um, I certainly think that the province knows how important um, um, IT connectivity is, and they seem to be doing um, some funding to support that. But as we've talked about in the past, this may um, actually be. Um, something that will require a local solution on. So that was really my thought in, in putting that, that project forward as a possible savings, but it is only hence 10 hours. Um, the next page um, we deal with um, establishing the IT governance committee. So this is where this gets a little, little um, interesting because my, I myself, the IT governance committee is established. And so um, that happened in 20. 20, and so I can take that off my list, but it still does require a lot of time and commitment from the other departments who are now um, supporting the IT Governance Committee um, throughout its um, evolution and how we structure uh, IT across the corporation. So in some ways that's saving me time in 2021, but it will be adding additional um, hours required by other departments. On the next page, um, I really felt that 14.1 to 14.3, as well as one, oh, sorry, 1.4.3, and, and then 1.6.1 1. 1, 1. Um, was really duplicated somewhere else in supporting the, the County of Perth official plan. So I have taken those hours out as well, or recommended taking those hours out, but um, that's only a total of 40. And already with um, the information that, that Sally um, is working on, I, I, the 70 hours um, that I allotted somewhere else are quickly being eaten up. And then the other one was um, just to support and promote North Perth as a community of character. I feel like that's well underway and um, 
something I could probably try and steal a few hours from, but it was only you know, only was five hours. So um, the departmental project um, that's been added um, is the council dashboard, and we've allocated 40 hours to that. Uh, interestingly enough, some of the things that aren't on here is the KPMG um, modernization report. Um, that was not included in any of the projects to date, so it probably really should um, be added. Um, so as we see, um, as soon as we complete these business plans, uh, potential is always there for um, um, more um, pressing issues to, to be placed on, on um, the business plan. So we will have to um, monitor that and um, continually update these when we look at adding um, projects that, that may be even, maybe even a result of provincial um, initiatives. So moving on to the communications department, um, really the operational part of the department is, is um, well handled um, within the hours allotted, but it's, it's not more than enough. And then when you start looking at um, strategic projects, um, and again, the mayor's um, complete mayor's task force that um, that that has been accomplished. So, um, but again, it's it's minimal hours. There was some talk of looking at delaying or deferring the socialization program at the library, and certainly with COVID going on, um, that can certainly be deferred. And again, that's only 12 hours. And one of the other problems we have is when you look at the the business plan too. Is, so that was a C. So that was a contributor into that program. So even 4.2.1 is the implementation sustain the Perth for Youth strat strategy, which is um, communications allotted six hours. She's just contributing to that project. So in some ways, if she gives up those six hours, that six hours really has to probably just go on to the, the, the department leading the project. In this case, that would be community development or economic development. So again, um, overall total capacity um, is we're 77 hours over capacity. Um, human resources, um, right now I could say that um, Operationally, we are not um, meeting um, the requirements um, operationally. Um, I think it's um, a struggle for this department to keep up with the ongoing demands of, of staff turnover and um, specifically even um, our health and safety um, demands um, um, regarding um, audits, compliance, and also as um, and the evolution of even just the amount of support employees um, need for things like short-term disability and other benefit programs. So um, one of the things that, that's being suggested is that we look at um, deferring the succession activity under, under the strategic projects. Um, although I think this is a pressing matter, I also do think that um, we do have to look at um, um, removing something from the list. So um, that is a suggestion. So overall, we're, we're down, we're about 500 hours short there. And then economic development, uh, certainly this um, position is very project heavy operationally. Um, there's a fair bit of capacity, but once we add in the projects, um, that is the issue. And certainly we are at 4.3.1. Um, the, the downtown Wi-Fi project has already been um, deferred by council, so there's a savings of 35 hours. But overall, when we look at um, the project hours plus the um, departmental projects, such as um, some of the ones brought on by COVID with the e-commerce e and Craig, um, we are looking at a, a shortfall of 308 hours. So overall, um, we're looking at about 1,758 hours um, short. Some of these hours can be certainly made up with the, the position of 
once it's restructured with the position of um, the admin assistant. Um, but that we're just working on that um, um, prod, uh, hopefully job description in the near future so we can bring it to the HR committee. So that's really um, the, sort of the, the quick high level overview of the, of the department plan. Um, I certainly was certainly sort of, the, for lack of a better word, the guinea pig to go through my department plan tonight. So um, if council would like to see us change on that process, we, we're open to comments because this is a new process for us as well. But I'm happy to answer any questions and we'll turn the, back over to Mayor Todd. Thanks, CEO Snell, for the overview and uh, for the courage of being the, the guinea pig in this endeavor. So, uh, Council, as you heard, what I proposed for the sake of our having a fulsome discussion is that we uh, suspend the usual rules of procedure. I did outline what I intend to do, which is to um, go through both the um, the operating, the, the routine operations matters and answer and address questions and ideas there and uh, as wave one and use that methodology where we fact find first and then turn our attention to ideas and uh, comments and then decision making and then uh, do a similar round uh, through the projects based activities of this department um, again with that sort of fact finding and, and analyzing uh, moving through ideas and then the possible decisions that, that support uh, the finalization of these plans. So uh, if you'll indulge me then, I guess what I'm, I'm asking is a, for a motion to suspend the rules uh, pursuant to my description of how our process will proceed. Um, can I call on Councillor Duncan to be our mover for that one? Yes, I'll move that. Thank you. And Deputy Mayor Callum, will you serve as our seconder? Yes, I will second that motion. Thank you. Uh, any discussion or debate on this one? Okay. We're not seeing any indication of that. Um, I'm hoping Danette has something of a resolution that we can look at in eScribe. So let's have that vote. Yeah, we need to see what's on the screen here too. And that's carried. Thank you, Council, for your indulgence. Okay, so. Um, here's our opportunity to dig in to the uh, routine operations of the organization. Uh, they've been presented across several different employees who hold the functions, uh, and they've described uh, essentially what their, their weeks look like and how that accumulates to annual operational effort. Um, I'm, I would be interested at this time in having any counselors who have questions about matters of fact on this um, to identify and, and we'll uh, see if we can't get you some answers. Let's start with Councillor Parents. Um, thank you, Mayor Kaysenberg. I just noticed that under um, economic development for projects, the Children's Museum is still there for 16 hours. And I'm wondering maybe that should be updated um, for this year. And my other um, concern that I have is with HR. I really do believe that we should be working on succession planning. And I'm concerned about the number of hours and just really a question through you to CAO Snell that perhaps we should be looking for some assistance in that department. And I would look forward to his comments. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Burns. Uh, CAO Snow, did you want to uh, address uh, that as sort of ideas and, and matter of, of facts at this point? Yes, thank you. So certainly, yes, um, just with the decision made by Council on at the budget meeting, um, the plan has not been updated um, since, since that day. So as I said, these are sort of ever evolving um, documents. And with regard to HR, I certainly agree. And that's really where one of the ideas I have in, in sort of transferring some of those hours from, um, from the admin assistant position, um, if we can create a job description that would support HR 
would sort of be how I'm, um, one way I'm looking at sort of using some of those hours that we currently have capacity for in the department. Thank you. Uh, we'll probably come back because there might be some decision making there. Um, with regards to other questions of matters of fact around the sort of routine operation of the organization and the data that's been presented. Councillor Andreessen. Yes, thank you uh, through you, Mayor Todd. Um, and I just wanna thank um, Mr. Snell for all his work with this because it's hard to look at what you have to cut in terms of your workload. It's uh, everything's important. Um, the question I have again is, is still remaining around that it, um, we'll call it admin assistant at this time. Um, and how many hours do you think that that would, could put a dent into one or more of these departments? Because um, that could help with some answers around, you know, um, do we have to cut as many projects if this person's hours were to um, counterbalance that. And I think that's, and I know that um, you started answering that a little bit with um, Councillor Behrens. It's just that I think this is important to kind of understand what, what impact that could have as we try and make decisions. Thank you. Um, Chris, did you wanna have a go at that? Yeah, and certainly, the, it, it's certainly a, a very difficult question to answer because upon the retirement, we were um, smack dab in the middle of COVID. Um, and at the time we delegated um, most of her um, responsibilities to other existing municipal staff. So a lot of um, what that position did was a lot of um, um, committee support um, so we now have other um, existing staff doing um, a lot of that community support. And some of that may be acceptable, but probably what I'm suggesting is some of that's also gonna come back um, to um, somebody um, at some point, just because those positions, quote unquote, under a normal year may not have the capacity to be doing um, sort of that, that community support work. Um, so, I wish I could answer it better just because COVID's sort of been such sort of messed up 2020 so bad. It's, it's hard to figure out what, what normal is again. Um, but certainly there'll be some of those hours I think that can, that it can address um, some of our shortfall. Um, but I'm just, it's hard to say if it, it can meet all the shortfall in the CAO or administration department at this time. Um, Chris, let me just j jump in here because I'm, I'm curious now. Um, the reports suggest that across the administration department, the equivalent of one full-time uh, equivalent would largely close the gap. Uh, the challenge, of course, is that the gap is sort of in little silos. There's a little, little bit in communications, a little bit in economic development, a little, a little more in HR. And, and so um, the, the implication from what I read, and I just want to make sure I understand this, is that um, an extra body um, could actually enable pretty much everything that's on that list at this point because we didn't take into consideration in your calculations as of the publishing of that report, um, the, uh, the things that you've suggested could be deleted tonight. But essentially, we're somewhere between uh, 0.8 and and a full-time equivalent, and one full-time equivalent, uh, scattered in such a way that it might be difficult to achieve. Does that sound like a question? Yeah, it, it certainly. That's, those are some of the conversations that actually um, HR and I have been having. Um, I've asked HR to look at what that job description might look like, and although um, some of the skill sets may be um, transferable, it really is sort of a broad array of what the position would look like. Not saying that that, that can't be filled, but it, 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 as you're, I think as you're correct, it does cross a myriad of, um, of areas. Um, so, and like I said, there's a lot of, a lot of 
that position that's been sort of farmed out to other people's desks right now too, for example, on Perth Meadows is being now covered by somebody else as well. So some of those, some of those positions or some of that work may come back or may be seen as an overload um, in the near future too. So I'm, I'm not certain we have a full position coming back to us, but it, it might be enough to sort of bridge that gap. I think the other flaw in our calculation too is that um, when we look at the hours per year, we're not calculating sick time or vacation time either. So um, that's also um, not really been added in our totals. So um, although I'm down for 18, 80 hours per year, um, when you calculate any vacation in there, it's certainly working hours becomes a lot less. Okay, so, so there is a um, discrepancy, some pluses and minuses possible around this based on what I'm, I'm hearing from you. Um, that's correct. And, and that's sort of in the, the, the holistic approach that there may be some trade-offs or some things that council could defer, which you've highlighted a few of them. And, and um, at least there's been one counselor who's pushed back a little bit. Um, and then there's the, how do we actually, uh, you know, achieve um, some of the additional things that have come along and how do we manage the things like vacation and so forth. So um, if I'm understanding, we're still sort of hovering around one, it could be, you know, plus 0 0.3 or minus 0 0.3. But my take is that, that that's sort of the variable window. Does that sound right to you? That sounds correct. Okay, thank you. Do we have any other questions about uh, the operations, the day-to-day -day data that uh, Mr. Snell has presented in his report on behalf of his team? Um, Chris, I'm gonna ask you one more if I might. Um, I have to admit, um, I look at your personal uh, analysis of, of your workload. And one of the things that sort of stood out to me and, and stood out to me in kind of a um, horrified way is, is how little time you seem to get to address strategic projects and, and policy and, and that kind of thing. Can you comment on that? So certainly in my own self-evaluation of, of my position, I would say that's the area that um, I first probably don't even meet the five hours a week that I'm saying I'm trying to do. Um, and while that's certainly I hate to say it, but as operational day-to-day -day staff overloads your desk, it's sort of that long-term um, strategic planning policy work that sort of gets um, always finds its way to the bottom of the pile. So I share, I really strongly share that concern um, that I do not spend enough time on on the long-term um, long-term planning, long-term strategic planning, long sort of the policy work of the municipality. I think that's a, a fair observation. Thanks. Uh, Councillors, anyone else with um, questions of fact or seeking information uh, with regards to the information presented on that sort of day-to-day -day operational side of, of that department? Okay, let's, let's turn to um, some thinking about this then, if we may. Um, CAO Snell in his report has suggested some areas uh, where action could be taken to defer. Um, I'm, I'd be interested in hearing any ideas from council uh, whether uh, to support some of the things that he's circled or, or colored in yellow in his document or whether uh, there's resistance to doing those things. As well, if council spots any other areas where there might be some change uh, uh, wielded as as Councillor Barons did when she commented about the um, the science center. Um, obviously, that's an impact. Are there any other places that we've spotted at this point that um, the council thinks might be worthy of a little more depth in terms of analysis or decision making? Uh, Councillor Andreessen, I think you're next. Yes, thank you uh, through you, Mayor Todd. Um, <clears throat> I actually would, um, as I went through the whole report, I made a whole column of, you know, cuts of service on one side, and then things that don't cut on the on one on the other side. And um, 
I noticed many things uh, similar to what um, Councillor Bierns mentioned was around the Children's Museum. So I noted that in terms of things that could be added to in terms of being cut. Um, the other, a couple of things that I would make suggestions around um, in terms of things that we could reduce or defer, I guess, would be around um, the implementation of the Driftscape app for events. And I may not fully understand that, but um, I, noted it was only, I noted it was only about 12 hours. And with COVID um, right now, I'm not sure what events are actually possible. And if that, is that something that can be deferred for um, another, you know, another year? So that's, that's one option I was thinking about. Um, the other thing was around programs for welcoming newcomers. Again, I think it's a, a valued program, but not something that we can implement very well at this time. Again, it's something that could be deferred. Um, there were some surveys being done um, for restaurants, and I think that that could be, um, you know, just surveys to see what the public was wanting around restaurants and entertainment and with businesses being troubled at this time um, and even some businesses struggling um, maybe that's not something at this time that you know could we defer that to another time um, the other question I had or comment I mean would be around um, supporting and developing a flexible transportation option system in southwestern Ontario there were 10 hours dedicated to that and um, I know that we already have our own transportation system you know started off in, in Perth County and I totally appreciate that and and I understand that time should be set towards that but perhaps on the broader level of southwestern Ontario that's something that could be done at another point so um, I just thought I would raise those comments around areas I felt that could be deferred or reduced at this time. Um, I'm certainly quite concerned that we, we stick to some of the key concerns for our region in terms of the promotion of our areas and agricultural hub, because um, that's what we are. And we have very unique needs because of that. And I feel that we should continue to um, pursue those kinds of interests and areas of focus in, in, our, in our region for sure. Um, and I, I think we've done some great work in terms of our mayor task force. And I, I think that I wouldn't wanna see a lot of that go. I think that um, was a good mandate for us as a council and we've we spent a lot of time on that. It would be hard to kind of step away from some of those mandates that we're thinking about in terms of youth and also in terms of um, affordable housing. So again, those are my comments around areas that I think we can perhaps defer in areas that I don't wanna lose sight of. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Andreessen. Um, I think that's exactly what I was hoping for, is that we would get that kind of input at this point. Uh, who's next? Councillor Richardson. Oh, thank you, Mayor Todd. Um, I also concur with uh, Councillor Behrens' notion that possibly we could use a little more assistance in HR. Um, that's obviously a slightly separate discussion, but I think there's an awful lot, there's a, a really good chunk of uh, hours that are being allocated into there with things that I do believe that could be taken care of with a, uh, an administrative uh, type of flair with some HR capabilities. And then you're not spreading yourself too thin if you could help out with one department. Um, one thing that did bring concern in the HR section of the report is 5.1.3 is uh, recommended for a cut is to develop and implement a succession plan. Uh, that can't happen. Um, I do strongly believe that that needs to be maintained and to develop and honed. Um, just with, it just it just needs to carry on. That that's not something we can keep bumping from year to year to year. I think we found that um, we're in certain situations the way we uh, certain organizations, if they don't implement a strategic 
succession plan that they can be in for a lot of trouble, and I certainly don't want us to see us fall into the same uh, envelope as that. So I do think that we could possibly help out with some more assistance in HR, um, and we have to keep that 5.1.3 for the uh, succession planning. I know it's 25 hours, but it's incredibly important to the overall structure um, of senior leadership and all of staff planning uh, coming going forward in the future. So, of which everything else hinges. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Richardson. I'll take note, and, and maybe it's a flaw in my uh, approach or methodology for this, that uh, several of the things that both uh, yourself and Councillor Andreessen mentioned were sort of project-based as opposed to the core duties or core activities of the department. Um, and, and that's okay. I, I mean, I think, you know, we we go with the flow, right? Um, but it's good that we're getting on the table some of the things that we feel are are um, worthy of our uh, attention and, and the department's attention to refine their plan. Um, uh, do we have something next up? Councillor Behrens is next. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor Kaysenberg. I would support everything that's been said so far. I still am highly concerned with the HR department and the succession planning. And I note that a lot in the HR, in the capacity, like they're talking about policy and procedure, and that takes up a lot of hours. And I'm just, I, when you say that um, perhaps the admin assistant could do it only if they have background in HR, I think if you try to get someone who is a supportive role to all the divisions in uh, the CAO's um, responsibility, I think it's going to be very hard to get someone who knows a little bit about everything. I would prefer, because I do believe the succession planning is important, and I do believe that, you know, there is need for time off and when you only have one person in that department to begin with i think that's magnified so i just think that my main concern would be yes um some of the other programs that are already mentioned i think can maybe fall by the wayside with the exception that i do support uh councillor andreessen on the egg hub and technology because that is who we are i'm still concerned about it being an assistant, um, admin assistant, as opposed to someone who actually specializes in HR and perhaps even policy writing. Thanks, Pastor Parents. Do we have another uh, per Okay, so, yeah, I'll actually, um, I'll, I'll chime in. Um, I, I think, uh, Council, you've shown wisdom in, in the comments here you've quickly highlighted where the, the most significant uh, problem lies, and that is in HR capacity. Um, I personally think that the, the unicorn that we're looking for is an HR communications person, um, uh, but I would equally be interested, as Councillor Behrens has said, in an HR policy person. And, um, and, and I agree with uh, all the sentiments about this, that this should not be an administrative assistant. This needs to be um, uh, true, like the, the dominant part of the role is HR, and uh, that person needs to have HR uh, chops, or at least be a recent graduate from uh, a program where HR was um, uh, what they were trying to achieve. So, um, uh, I, I, my own sense, my own instinct is that um, we're right on the money here with regards to HR augmentation, and um, and yes, it may not be a full time role in HR. So let's find what the one other piece is that will make the, the highest difference or the highest impact on the organization, whether that's communications or policy. Um, I'm flexible, but um, um, I've got some own sense here. Do we have any other comments about this at this point now? Professor Rothwell. Thanks very much, Mayor Todd, and thanks, uh, Chris, for uh, your uh, presentation and uh, for the comments that have been received by the other councillors. Sometimes uh, I think we focus in on uh, an additional uh, staff person uh, as opposed to additional uh, help that is very specialized, and uh, we uh, have uh, used uh, HR 
uh, professionals previously, and some of these are very much project-based. And frankly, if uh, once the project's done, uh, the question will be as to whether or not there is ongoing work that needs to be done, or in fact, this is a project-by-project -project basis. So I was uh, wondering if we could hear from Chris in terms of uh, the uh, thought process in terms of uh, whether we uh, would uh, look at uh, retaining uh, consulting help uh, on the HR specific side. So you would have a professional HR person to help with those specific HR uh, issues. Thank you. So, so I guess in response to Councillor Rothwell's question, certainly that's something we could look at, but, but unfortunately even the operational um, services that the HR department's currently um, undertaking is that um, we're about 120 hours over over um, capacity already and that um, that is that is with no um, training and development um, hours put in so I believe there's an ongoing issue with with the certainly the, the services side of the department um, so but I but I believe we can make up maybe some of the project hours um, through consulting, which I, I believe we probably will be looking at um, anyway. Um, I think, um, and I hope every year is not quite like 2019, but um, um, we had 36 postings and 72 hires. Um, that alone um, will keep one person busy. Um, um, by the time we um, do postings, interviews, um, and, and appropriate onboarding. And I'm not sure some of our onboarding couldn't even be enhanced from, from what we're dealing with now. Um, so certainly I can, can look at what projects we can, can look at um, turning over to, to um, an outside consultant um, as an option. Um, but I, I certainly kind of agree with the rest of some of the other council comments. It's just um, that, one person role is, is sort of being overwhelmed um, on a on a day to day basis. Thanks, CEO Snell, and and I think I mean if you look at the the undertow of the report with regards to the uh, HR operations, uh, you see a clear indication, Council, that there is concern about the degree of involvement with health and safety at this point. Um, it would appear that what's budgeted in the operating hours is, um, is a day a week, essentially. And, uh, and what we're being told, though, is that if we're to do this well and properly, it will take three days a week of, of uh, employee time. So, um, you know, I, I, unless I misunderstood that, Chris, can you clarify that one? Um, I, I think there's a concern here that's fairly real. Yeah, that would be that would be the assessment assessment to date. We're fulfilling all our legal obligations and mandates under our health and safety, um, but it really is um, sort of the, the bare minimum. Um, and certainly, one of the things that we would like to do is see an enhanced um, health and safety program. Um, and it, it certainly would require um, more like those three days a week. And right now, for example, even our safety compliance officer is is. Um, filled by a, a position with a completely full-time job doing something else. It's just a, it's something they're trying to do um, on the side. And could you comment further about onboarding and training and uh, the extent of our capabilities and, um, and our ability to sort of fulfill on that at the present time? Uh, certainly. Um, and it really, um, the department heads, I have to give them um, full credit. They, they do, a, do a, a lot of onboarding um, specifically to the department. So they certainly learn the day-to-day -day operations, but certainly um, with things like health and safety, um, things like um, even accessibility, accessibility training, um, some of the more um, generalized um, topics, uh, that might even involve working for a municipality, um, um, training around um, um, harassment training, those sort of things. We're, we're fulfilling that, but in some ways we're, we're, we're doing a lot of it um, 
certainly online or through pamphlets, and I think we could certainly um, enhance that training um, to be to be more um, intimate um, with our with our new employees, um, sort of to give to give them, I think, a, a broader sense of what it's like to work for North Perth and and start them off in the right foot um, and bringing them into a, a culture um, that they're comfortable with and that we want to promote. Thank you. Okay, um, any other questions or ideas that you want to put on the table, Council, before we uh, turn to evaluating uh, what seem like a few options here in terms of uh, next steps? Advice that we can give the CA CAO so that he can bring back a revised report? Anything else? Okay, we're not seeing any, any other comments at this point in time. Uh, that's not to say that uh, after this meeting, uh, if you have ideas or thoughts uh, that bear that uh, you can't share them, of course, with staff as appropriate. Um, so what I heard, um, and, and I guess I'm going to ask uh, if this is Council's wish, uh, is that um, at least for some of the projects, there, there were some opportunities identified that could remove some of that project burden from staff. Um, some of them in particular for reduction or deferral included the Children's Museum, which we've already made some decisions about, uh, the Driftscape app, uh, programs for welcoming newcomers, uh, surveys for restaurants. I, I think there were a couple of line items in there about the restaurant community in the, in the plan and um, supporting a flexible transportation system. Although I, I think uh, the CAO is hard pressed to extricate himself directly from the, the conversations about the transit system uh, that have uh, already happened and that continue to happen as a matter of, of managing and, and regulating uh, that project in Perth County. Um, I heard that we should not run away from the agricultural hub and, and technology hub investigation. And I also heard um, a strong commitment, at least from those who spoke, to the issue of a succession plan and to make sure that we carry through with a project on that in the coming year. I also finally heard that uh, perhaps some of this could be achieved uh, by HR augmentation directly, uh, or it could be achieved through uh, strategic use of contractors. And so um, I'm going to ask Council, if it's your will, to ask the CAO to respond to all of the things that we've identified tonight um, and, um, and bring forward sort of a, a, some targeted recommendations on the areas that we've identified. Is that, do, do you think I've captured Council's will well? Anyone think I'm missing something here? Sure, Councilor Harris. Yeah, Mayor Kaysenberg, thank you. Um, today we received uh, an email with updated um, activities in a different format. And I noticed, uh, if I may ask uh, the CAO a question on a couple of them. Um, we're talking on, I don't know what page it is, it's uh, 4.1.3 support for the community of character. North Perth has always been a member of this community of character. Is that specifically what those hours are for? And the next one is 4.3.1. Um, I think that one's probably going to be removed because it's like um, public Wi-Fi. And then the other one was, I did have a question on, 5.2.2, and it's talking about a request for proposal for a chief information officer. I honestly can't remember what we had talked about there. Could you remind me what that was for? Chris, go ahead. So certainly, yeah, that document was really the, the, the implementation plan um, that was presented to council last spring. So I just wanted to give council sort of um, sort of the overall global picture of the implementation plan, because I think it does get difficult when we break it down by department, um, what the projects are. So that really was just to give council sort of the broad look at, at um, the, the goals and activities of the four-year implement or four-year strategic plan. Um, 
certainly all the ones um, with the X under the yellow highlighted were year one projects. And the first one was, um, yes, just continuing to support community of character. And certainly um, um, that's mostly been a recreation and programming um, study so most, or uh, um, duty so far. So most of those hours will show up in, in um, that work plan. Now there was um, um, sort of a caveat that all the departments support that program. And I had a couple hours down in that program because I think we all do support the program and we all actually um, make it part of our staff meeting and our work group meetings to talk about community of character. Um, but I did shave those hours off even though it was not significant to my department. Um, sorry, the next one was... Um, 4.3.1. Thank you. Yeah, so that, again, we haven't updated this one since that project's been deferred. So yeah, year one, we can um, um, remove the public Wi-Fi because that's been at least shelved for um, the time being. Um, now, swift Im implementation is maybe, maybe um, coming faster depending on our involvement in that just because um, um, as we know that there may be some announcements around um, that in the, in the near future. And then um, the final one, I will have to look into that more myself actually tonight. Um, information technology master planning is not um, really something um, I can speak to just off the cuff and I'll have to go back and um, ask for some clarification on that, but I can certainly do that. Uh, Deputy Mayor Kellum is next. Uh, yes, uh, Mayor Kiesenberg. Um, Chris, great uh, presentation tonight and uh, well performed. Um, just a question with the 17, I'm going to say 16, the 16 highlighted uh, items, whether they're yellow or the one red, I'm taking the 5.13 out that Councillor Richardson was speaking on. Do you know what the total hours were that would be saved? I knew that was going to be a question, and I was looking at going to do that at one time today, and I did not add up the total hours. So, um, what I would certainly do is recommending, as 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 the mayor suggested, us taking that council's um, sort of comments, taking a look at it, and bringing back a, an additional report, um, um, which we could include that information. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, thanks. Okay, so um, Council, you heard my summary a little earlier. Um, Councillor Behrens has added a couple of things, the questions that we'll add to the mix. Um, I think the way we should look at this is that essentially what we did is we whiteboarded, we collected a whole bunch of ideas, and we also had a, a number of questions, most of which were answered, but some of which may yet uh, need some attention. So um, my suggestion at this point then is that um, that we give staff uh, direction uh, with regards to this to uh, bring back revisions to the business plan as, as, as intimated through some of the things we talked about and also uh, to bring back some information about um, navigating whether we should do an HR hire or whether we should uh, look at cobbling together consultants to uh, manage some of the projects that have been identified. And um, certainly, I think in, in that, uh, Chris, you heard some of my comments, concerns about onboarding and training and safety as matters that um, need a little bit more detail for our ability as council to make a decision about how to proceed. Um, so council, I don't know if I want to repeat all the things that we had identified on the whitelist uh, here, but um, I'm hoping that what we're doing now is we're giving staff direction to um, revisit the um, administration departmental business plan uh, per council's discussion and uh, additionally to uh, bring back recommendations to council um, with a full report on the human resources augmentation. Does that seem like a reasonable motion, Pat? Okay. Uh, council, anyone have a way that they'd like to improve that motion before I... Uh, seek support for it uh, as a mover and seconder out there. 
Okay, um, then why don't we turn to that, consider it, uh, uh, that's the text essentially. Uh, Councillor Duncan, would you support uh, this as a mover? Yes, I can move that. Thank you, and Deputy Mayor Kellum, will you serve as our seconder for that one? Yes, I will second that motion. Great, thank you. Any discussion or debate? Are we seeing anything? Okay, let's have that vote. I'm not sure what that's good enough for us, but hopefully it's something tasty. That's pretty good. Thanks to that. And that is carried. Thank you very much. Council, thanks for your indulgence with that process. Um, I would like feedback on that process from you if you would like to send it to me by email afterwards if you had any concerns or objections about the process uh, because we're going to be seeing, uh, I don't know, five or six more of these and it'd be good to uh, confirm how we go about analyzing them and, and um, rec making recommendations. And if I could just, if, certainly, Mayor Todd, if I could just add to that too, I, we'll probably be bringing at least one plan forward next Monday night as well and, and it will depend on sort of how much other um, businesses on the council agenda and how complicated the business plans are. And then I, after tonight's proceedings is based on what I've heard tonight, we'll, we'll be bringing back the revised business plans too, as soon as they're ready as well. I don't suspect mine will be back and ready for sort of the review next Monday again, but, but maybe early March, we'll maybe have one business plan to go through and one of the one and some revisions from, from um, earlier reviews coming back at the same meeting if, if the, the council thinks that's an appropriate process. If you want my opinion on this, Chris, it would be lovely to finish this in Q1 so that by the end of March we have uh, this entire process sort of rolled up if we can. Uh, I agree. Thank you. Okay. Um, Council, uh, before we move on, any last um, comments or wishes on this matter? Okay. Um, Pat, do we need a resolution to bring back the rules or are we, uh, we just good to proceed? Okay, so I guess uh, Pat's telling me I, I'm instructing us that we're moving back into the regular council meeting at this point. There you go. Um, that sounded bossy somehow. Um, all right, uh, Pat's laughing, trust me. Um, so that brings us to agenda item uh, six on uh, tonight's agenda, which uh, pertains to uh, opportunities for councillors to ask for reports, either of staff or our committees. Uh, if you are so interested, please identify in the chat uh, function and, and we'll call your name for your requests. Okay, so we're not seeing anything. Um, that moves us to agenda item seven. We've received no items of correspondence beyond that already shared in the consent agenda for council's disposition. That brings us to agenda item number eight which allows council to consider and enact bylaws. Turning to item 8.1, council is asked to enact a bylaw authorizing agreement with Green Tech Services for their implementation of a program in North Perth for the collection, handling, repurposing, and recycling of electronic waste. Um, Clerk Bearfelds, do you have comments or is this for Mr. Hackett? Mr. Hackett. Um, Mr. Mark Hackett, our uh, Manager of Environmental Services, can speak to this one. Uh, Mark, welcome. Thanks, Mayor Kaysenberg and Council. Um, yeah, this was a follow-up to the report that I brought back on November 23rd of 2020, and it was a report on the changes coming to the electrical and electronic recycling in Ontario. Um, so from that report, um, we we're planning on continuing with our current recycler, which is Green Tech. And at the time, they were deciding on whether or not they would become what they call a pro, a producer responsible organization. And they have done that, and they have provided this agreement for us. Um, we are now operating under, under the new regulation for electronic recycling in Ontario. And this agreement is for um, one year with an option to renew. They've included scheduling uh, or Schedule D, which has the pricing that they're offering for. Um, the electronics that are collected. Um, the prices are um, comparable, uh, but better than they were before. Um, you know, we were averaging be between 
five and 18 cents a pound previously, and now they're looking at closer to 25 to 50 cents per pound, depending on the various um, different items that we're collecting. So that's it. I could answer any questions if there's any. Uh, thanks, Mr. Hackett. Council, any questions or first comments on this bylaw matter? Councilor Andreessen. Hi, thank you through you, Mayor Kaysenberg. Um, I just have a question for Mr. Hackett. Um, can you just clarify that when people recycle these items through Green Tech, they would be bringing them to the like a, the landfill collection site where they would be sorted? It's not something that you could do in, in your own bins. Is that correct? Yes. Um, through you, Mayor Caseberg, that is correct. Um, this is a program that's offered at the uh, Alma Landfill only at our recycling facility. Um, you cannot put these items into your blue bins or anything like that. This is strictly for there. Um, we used to collect it in kind of a bulk bin, uh, but now as part of the new program, uh, the different components like TVs and printers and different cables and, and things like that that we collect are all separated on site prior to being um, taken. That's why we're getting a little bit more money for the products because they're actually being separated by the public as they put them into the correct bins. Thank you, Mr. Hackett. I just thought that might be helpful for the public as well. Thank you. Any further questions or uh, comments? Mr. Rothwell? Thanks very much, uh, Mayor Todd, and uh, thanks, Mark, for uh, your report. Uh, there's been a fair bit of information uh, uh, in the media regarding uh, old computers and data on those computers and so on. Is Does uh, Green Tech have a policy or, uh, in place to uh, ensure that uh, any uh, computers and so on that are given through to that are, are cleared or, or are they just, uh, is the, uh, is it just totally uh, uh, decommissioned? Like there's no chance of uh, the data being, uh, getting into the wrong hands. Thank you. Yeah, yes, um, Green Tech definitely does not allow any of the information to leave their property. Um, included on page five, they have um, of the agreement. They have a their data uh, privacy and security information there that where they're basically guaranteeing that their customer data is is protected um, and not going any further than um, their hands as they go through the process of recycling. I appreciate that. Thanks, Mark. I saw that and I just want to make sure because, uh, every now and again, we do see in the news where there is a breach of data. Appreciate it. Thank you. Anything further, Council? We're not seeing anything further in the chat function, so I have a resolution for our consideration that bylaw number 10-2021 being a bylaw to authorize a signing of an agreement with Green Tech Services be introduced, read and considered read for second and third time and be finally passed and that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Also, Johnston, will you serve as our mover for this one? Yes, I would move that. Thank you. And uh, Councillor Rothwell, will you be our second? I'll second the motion, yes. Thank you. Any discussion or debate? We're not seeing any, so let's have that vote. And that is carried. Oh, we lost a vote. Okay, there it is. Back. It was, it was a little, little bit of a glitch there, I think, for a moment. Just a second. Uh, that is carried. Thank you. Um, that brings us to agenda item nine. Are there any notices of motion from councillors this evening? Please so indicate in the chat function. We're seeing no indication of that. That brings us to item 10. For item 10.1, are there any announcements that would be of benefit to our community or that reflect well on North Perth at this time? If you would like to speak and this invitation is extended to staff, please uh, so indicate in the chat window. Okay. We're not seeing anything. I will draw attention uh, to the community of the coldest night of the year fundraiser 
Um, I believe I've mentioned this before. If not, um, just call it forgetful. Um, this fundraiser is coming up the last week of February. It is a virtual sort of a loan executed walk and uh, raising funds for issues of homelessness in our community, sponsored by uh, the United Way and the North Perth United Way Community Committee. I'm grateful for their work and uh, for the opportunity to participate in an event which not just for us, but uh, has been executed in many places across Canada and raised lots of funds for homelessness causes. Uh, that brings us to agenda item number 11. Uh, we have no matters for consideration tonight in a closed session meeting of council, which means for item 12, we have nothing to report to our community in response to having a closed session meeting. Council as a mandated good practice acts near the end of its meeting agenda to confirm all of its actions and business of its meeting through what's called the confirmatory bylaw. I have the draft for a confirmatory bylaw number 12-2021, which reads as follows. That bylaw number 12-2021 being a bylaw to confirm generally previous actions of the Council of the Municipality of North Perth the introduced read and considered read a first, second, and third time and be finally passed. Let the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Can I call on Councillor Seiler to be our mover for this? Yes, I'll move it. Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Andreessen, will you be our seconder? Yes, I'll second that motion. Thank you very much. Any discussion or debate? I'll note ahead of the vote that we expect three councillors not to vote based on their declarations earlier in the meeting. Anything that we're seeing here, uh, Pat? Okay, let's have that vote. And that is carried, thank you. Councillors, we've completed all the deliberation and taking action on the business that did come before us tonight. Before I read a motion to adjourn, is there any further business? Thank you, I have a motion to adjourn, which reads as follows. The council meeting adjourns at 8.47 p.m. To meet again for general council business on Monday, February 8th, 2021 at 7 p.m. Can I call on Councillor Anstead to be our mover for that? Yes, I would move that motion. Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Burns, will you serve as our seconder? Yes, I will second that motion. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that's not debatable, so let's have that vote. And that is carried. Thank you, Council. Um, uh, thank you for your work tonight. This Council will meet again, as said earlier, uh, using di digital enabling technologies on Monday, February 8th, 2021. I encourage all of our community to, to uh, stay home, stay safe, and save lives. This meeting is now adjourned. Thanks. Have a good night. Mayor Todd. Yes. Um, I noticed on my planning calendar that I had 